Thank you everyone for joining again. And if it's the first time that you actually in this channel in Coralina Canada Talk Show, uh, my name is Ben Pelta. I'm a digital nomad. I'm right now in Guatemala in Atitlan. Uh, today we have Nina with us, which is an expert in digital lifestyle. Well, a podcast host, a um, digital marketing expert with an agency and kind of a coach as well we can call you for digital lifestyle uh, right and and kind of work <laughs> not, not a fan of the word coach but i'm yeah, me too, me too. Mentor. yeah I'm, I'm really careful with that really careful with that all right so first of all thank you for joining how are you doing thank you so much for having me thank you <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> our pleasure um so yeah tell me a little bit about yourself uh, tell the audience uh, basically give us like your five minutes you know introduction sure <laughs> so my name is Nika Nina I am I'm from the Netherlands that's why my name is Ninka I'm but moving abroad I added Nina to it because it was so difficult to pronounce so you can say Nina. I have been living abroad for nine years and I'm a digital nomad for a bit over five years now. And over the years, I have been a freelancer. Um, I've been part of a company full-time remotely. I have done and freelancing and working remotely at the same time. Um, but most importantly, what I'm doing today is that I'm a multi-passionate entrepreneur. So I have multiple income streams. I do a lot of different things but all these things are very well connected so maybe for other people it's like huh but how does it work when you do so many things like i always make sure that they're somehow connected and uh yeah one of these things is a digital nomad lifestyle expert i'm and yeah and marketing i love well i have a podcast right so i love well talking <laughs> i love interviewing people and uh, I'm pretty good at digital storytelling. So I help my clients build webinar funnels for their business so they can uh, get more leads, sell more and build bigger brands. And yeah, mo the majority of my clients, they're actually helping other digital nomads. So that's great. So all nomad. <laughs> Perfect. So, wow, nine years living abroad. I mean, yeah. it's kind of, yeah, you're almost in the 10... 10 years mark almost a decade uh, yeah <laughs> almost a decade um so yeah tell us a little bit about how it started tell us your story yeah absolutely so my story started where i did not speak english not a word and i had always dreamt of going abroad like that and especially my dream was to speak english and to just live a life in english i don't know why i had that so strong i was watching like mtv and those things <laughs> and like series like the hills and these girls had so much drama and and i just wanted english uh, i don't know but i didn't speak a word english and i wasn't particularly book smart so um i yeah i wasn't learning for a while then at one point I did my bachelor degree and half or in the first year they told me about this Erasmus um, exchange, which is a European based concept. I think they're international now as well, but that basically means that you study for a while in another school in Europe. So I applied for that, but again, I didn't speak English. So I really had to like do the, yeah, like learn so I could do like the bare minimum. And I passed my test, which was great. And yeah, and then I moved abroad. And that's where my whole life changed. Like I was in Denmark. Um, I was in an international business school in Denmark. So what was really nice about that is that it was not just Erasmus. They were also people from Korea, Kenya, uh, Latin America. Like there were, it was really, really global. So I made a lot of like international friends and it was just so fascinating to see that people have different habits when they are about to eat dinner. Like my my more like Southern friends, like Spanish, Latin America, uh, the Latinos, the Portuguese, they would like eat chips while we were cooking. And don't do that in a Dutch person's home because that is extremely 
fruit, like stuff like that, just like the very day to day things. And for me, it was mind blowing. And I felt so connected. And I felt like my curiosity was sparked the whole time. And that was for me really the first time I truly felt like I belonged somewhere. Yeah, so it started doing that. And then I couldn't get enough of it. So I applied for an internship moved to Italy. And that was a half year there. And uh, then I wrote my thesis, my bachelor thesis, which is like a research. I, I wrote it in English. Can you imagine? Um, so I did that uh, to just stay abroad. And then I graduated and moved, bought a one-way ticket to the Philippines. I found a job there in a tech startup um, and then stayed in Asia. And then slowly I, I became a digital nomad. Wow. So you finished school, you just took yourself and wait, you've been in Italy and then moved straight to the Philippines? Yeah. So actually from Italy, I went first like to the Netherlands because I had to pick up my degree and yeah. I also had to take care of some paperwork. But yeah, I just bought a one-way ticket and there was a job on the line. I, I got that job when I arrived there, but when I hopped on the plane, the job wasn't mine yet. Um, so yeah, I just went there and I wasn't fully alone. My housemate in Italy, she was Filipina or was she still is. Um, so she, uh, her and her friends and her whole family, they were like, Nee, let's move to the Philippines. I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> that. It was very adventurous. So yeah, I bought the one way ticket and I went there and I stayed there for like a little bit over two years, I think. Yeah. And how you actually start to be like, how you become a digital nomad? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, in the Philippines, I was working at a, in an educational tech startup. It was super cool, but it was my first real, real job. I, my English back then was at a level that I could like point out stuff in the kitchen, but not like write professional emails. So I had to work extremely hard to make that work for me. Like it was overwhelming. And I'm always a bit of, um, yeah, in Dutch, we say a workhorse, like just someone that works extremely hard. And that's what I was doing. And I was basically, my house was five minutes walk from the office. I kind of lived in that office. So I would be working uh, also on the weekends and just really a lot because I was so passionate about this work, this startup. Like we did some really cool stuff there. Um, I really loved it. And yeah, I, I just really enjoyed it. But then at one point I, I had a headache for what was it for like seven months straight. And that was not good. And uh, we figured that I was, I was facing a burnout. Like I had like this, such an intense headache. Like I didn't even drink alcohol. Like it was, um, it was intense. So I had this burnout and then my friend who uh, was, sometimes in in manila in the philippines he's he had a house in bali and he said to me you know why don't you work remotely from bali and i was like work what yeah like you just bring your laptop to bali and then you stay at the house i have like extra rooms you can be there do it for two weeks and then maybe you feel a little bit better and when i was there i i saw all these people with their laptops and you know, it was like, wow, what's going on? But I was doing that. So that wasn't part of my vocabulary. So when I was in Bali, I was like, wow. And this is kind of also where I started to join some events. Um, I stayed a little bit longer, actually, than two weeks. And when I came back to the Philippines, I was going back to my office, back to my office life. And I just felt like I just felt strange. I felt like so disconnected from myself. Yeah. Whereas in Bali, I felt so connected with myself. And uh, so I decided to go back to Bali. And then at one point, I also figured that I really had to like do another job. And this is how I slowly transformed uh, into, well, first working remotely with this it didn't work out, um, but that's okay. Then I went freelancing. I didn't like it so much because I don't like going after clients. And also I wasn't really, I was doing, as I'm multi-passionate, I was doing a bunch of stuff and I didn't know how to sell that. It's very difficult when you do all kinds of stuff. Also, I'd never heard of the word virtual assistant. Like I didn't know that that existed either. Um, and also back then, like you can't, 
time, but it was not like how it is now that you can, yeah. like you could Google stuff, you could go on YouTube and learn things, but it wasn't like how it is today and a bunch of years ago. Like this is like five years ago. This is different times. I feel the beginning, the beginning of the term digital nomads, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like it was, a, yeah. So, and that's sort of how, how it started. Um, and because I wasn't such a nomad hub, I got like on a fast train because I went to the co-working space. I went to the events. I met like people that were just like me starting out, but also people that have been doing this for a really long time already. This is where and I also started Digital Nomads Daily. So my uh, platform is now a podcast, but back then it wasn't a podcast. It was more like a blog. I am. Yeah. So I started interviewing people and be like, hey, how do you do it? Because I want to know how to do this too. <laughs> cool uh awesome what a story wow so first question i gotta ask I, i'm sure that the audience want to hear it when you moved from the philippines to bali for the first time the adding what happened to it like is it gone the what the headache you had a headache extreme headache oh, for like yeah, yeah. seven months right yeah yeah actually i so i figured that i had a burnout um so i had to work way 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 less uh, less behind my screen and that's what what happened in bali very naturally so, stress or like the work the work itself the the people around you what was it it's a combination of things but what happened is that when you work a lot and you're always behind your screen and you're like always rushing for work and you when you have a lot of like worry thoughts in your head there's a lot of pressure like our minds cannot take take that so um i'm also someone that has light migraines so that was like that was just not a good cocktail basically but when i came to bali what happened there was i would go to the beach and watch the sunset Usually I would be in the office. I would go for a dance class or something. Usually I would be in the office. I'm there. The lifestyle itself was different. I also, I did eat very, very healthy in Bali or sorry, in, in Manila. Um, but I do think that because I ate a little bit more and I was like, I had time to eat so i was because in in the office i was just always like behind yeah, my laptop just, quickly like yeah and then you have a, a meeting there and a dinner there and quick that like it was it was a rush life it was a an office rush life i um, the commute wasn't crazy because it was five minute walk but because of that i never had like a proper transition time going home and in bali all of that changed I went for like walks, I went on adventures, I made a lot of friends. So it was a combination. But I think that when you like, I'm not a doctor, right? But just because I can connect with myself, I can listen to my body, and I can design my morning to evening completely based on how I feel, this conscious living helps me to create something that works for me now i still work quite a bit but if i feel like oh i'm getting this headache again I, i close my laptop and go out in nature yeah. so that's like one of my sort of prerequisites like i really need to be i need to go to the beach a, a park a forest a lake something <laughs> yeah to, to kind of break out all right cool so Another question that I'm always kind of like to ask when we're talking about the, the big changes, right? So you didn't quit right away the office job, right? In the Philippines, you moved to Bali, you give it a try. But I mean, what was the thoughts over there? Like you already knew probably that it's not going to work, and, mm -hmm. but still you need income. So what are we doing? Exactly. I'm, I'm not like a very big risk taker. So yes, I, you know, I went abroad, I bought a one way ticket. But if you really think about it, when I bought that one way ticket to the Philippines, I was welcomed by the sweetest family in, on this planet. Like yeah. there have always been something like a reason why I would go somewhere. So it was for studying abroad, for an internship, to write my thesis, to maybe have a job. But hey, I was staying with my, with my Filipino family, I would say. Um, so it took me a while because when I went to Bali and I was about to decide to quit my job, I didn't necessarily have something else. There was a job on the line and I took that job. 
but that wasn't sure. So it took me, it took long. And sometimes it still, still takes me a little bit long to make decisions because I, I'm someone that worries a lot. So I need to like be really confident to do that. I'm so I think with that being said, this whole vibe of sell all your stuff and go to the other side of the globe, like, I don't buy it because there might be a small percentage that does that. There might be a small percentage that um, gets a lot of satisfaction from that, but that is not mainstream. There's a very, like it's a small percentage. So I find those stories very inspiring, but often when you interview, and this is what I also have on my podcast, you will hear that people probably still have a storage place or just something, you know? It's yeah. not like you toss everything and bomb new yeah. life. There, there's something there a lot of the times. Not all the times, but a lot of the times. So, yeah, I, I it took me long because I, I wasn't sure if... I just wasn't sure. I think that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, cool. Now, what was the first job that you actually did as a freelancer or when you just started to be kind of, you know, full on digital nomad? Oh, yeah, I, I was I was like, he's probably going to ask something about that. <laughs> so cool. my job was a marketing project manager that was in the remote job. It didn't work out. Um, but I was managing. Yeah, I was managing the marketing of projects. Then after that didn't work out, I was doing Facebook ads for um, some clients through uh, my network in the Philippines that I really liked, um, but I had a few clients and like my big client, big mistake, obviously, my sort of 80% client, 80% of the income client, they shifted um, direction. So they just needed those ads anymore, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. So well. Wow. Wow. That was it. And this happens to a lot of people, right? That's why people yeah, been like other I've been there as well. Yeah. It's crazy. One day you're waking up and yeah, I mean, <laughs> what are we doing next? <laughs> I have so much yeah. free time, but uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And and I, I hit a, a black hole, honestly. Like it wasn't colorful because I, I didn't know what to do. Like again, I a virtual assistant it that I, I had this um i did this interview and the girl said yeah i took a course to become a virtual assistant and she was telling that i was like that's so but, smart like why didn't i do that just one i course didn't even know I, that this is a thing like a course for a va no i had no clue I did not know that that existed. That is crazy. Like I don't know under what rock I was living, but like maybe on a suitcase. But it was. I didn't know it existed. This was still years back, but yeah. So um, I just did like a lot. Then I'm. Uh, I also um, did like content creation. So in essence, um, I did a lot of content marketing kind of things. Um, I liked it, and then I had a time that I did a lot of uh, website design on the site. Um, I still like doing that, but only I only now work with people that I truly like working with. So it's not like a main income stream, but that's still happening. It's more like a creative outlet. Um, yeah, and you know what? When it wasn't working, I was like, okay, this is not good. Uh, so I started applying for remote jobs. That was terrible. I found two jobs. One at a sexy startup and one at a beauty brand. And the beauty brand, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do like influencer marketing. That's not my thing. So I went for the sexy startup, worked there five weeks, stupid me, no contract. They didn't pay me. Eventually, they I didn't pay you. They didn't no, pay terrible, you. Terrible. Really? Yeah, they're a stupid mistake. Um, but yeah, I, and then I learned I never ever work now without a contract. Uh, so yeah. it didn't happen again. But hey, this, like these scams, though, they happen. It happens, it sucks. Um, but then I, I luckily at the beauty company, they hired someone and that didn't work out. So eventually I, I worked at the beauty company for two years. I, I really enjoyed right. it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of hustle in the beginning, right? Uh, it sounds that still kind of you you yeah. love like multiple <laughs> projects and stuff like that so the hustle is always there 
Um, mm. what would you say for the younger hustler that just starting? Uh, how you keep the head above the water? You know, it's like really hard work just to try to chase the project. Yeah, yeah, I, I love that question. So, one over the years <laughs> hustling hard. One of the things that I learned, and this is a, a framework that I uh, use in my own projects, is is to ask yourself a few questions and really sit with yourself before you say yes to everything because you really don't have to do that. And um, also before you say yes to all the different things. So I think one, one lesson that I had, I was so not sure what I wanted to do, but I had all these skill set. I could edit your videos. I could design your website. I could publish your SEO all those soft skills are great like love that i have them every day i'm super grateful for these skills um it was also overwhelming because i didn't know how to navigate through all of that so when you are thinking like okay i have a bunch of skills and i can use this to uh, make money online through a product or a service what i recommend to do is first focus on if you are genuinely motivated to do that on the long run so let's say you can edit a podcast episode and you want to do that for someone else are you still gonna like that after after like a hundred episodes or are you gonna be like ah okay i don't like it that much yeah. like those kind of questions like try to see that bigger picture for yourself and then niche down in a way that that it's very clear what you're offering so then when some when you are at an event or wherever you can say oh i'm a virtual assistant focus on podcast editing x and y and z or oh i am a marketing expert focused on this i didn't do that so every time i came somewhere i didn't know what to say like people were like oh nina what are you doing I'm like, things <laughs> <laughs> so be sp like know what you want be specific for yourself so you can be specific to others and don't say yes to anything and um don't always accept free projects that's also something people are like oh this is great for your portfolio but then i would work like a lot of time on paid be too shy to be like oh but i actually want to get paid and not know how to do that so I would actually take a course, like take a course. If you don't know what you want to do, take a course on virtual assistant or something. Yeah. Right. Um, thanks for that. First of all, it was like, yeah, it was awesome. <laughs> um, all right. So challenges, uh, a lot of challenges in, in digital mm -hmm. nomad lifestyle. I will start with my personal right now challenge uh, that I'm like, specifically now, uh, internet. Uh, my internet suck. Uh, I love everything. I love everything, but the internet, it's so bad. I cannot work. Um, tell me, like, first of all, how you deal with it. Uh, I don't have, like, a solution. I'm just moving to Mexico now. So <laughs> this is my solution. Uh, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, <laughs> what can you do? Um, what is the biggest challenge for you? Well, honestly, on the internet one, uh, Wi-Fi anxiety is a real thing. That exists. That's not a joke. I have been in Brazil for a while. I experienced that too. I am actually today at a co-working space because uh, of a bad internet connection and massive construction next to our house. I don't want to. Um, I don't want to deal with that today. So, um, challenges. Well. Since we're talking a little bit like hustling, um, overwhelm is a very big challenge. So, um, you know, like managing your day. And I think that this is something that people don't always think about. But when you have a lot of freedom, like a digital nomad, that also comes with a lot of decision making. And because you're not going on your autopilot, which is something that our brains are, are wired to do, you constantly need to reinvent your day-to-day -day operations. Like literally, how do you operate as a human, a working human in Mexico, in Brazil, in Lisbon, in Bali? And that is difficult. So overwhelm is hard in terms of uh, um, thinking about all these things. So that's one thing. I'm also, also overwhelmed could be hard with work. Like, do you have a lot of projects? How do you manage your time? Do you even manage your time? 
So like that's kind of in the overwhelm bucket. I think that I don't I don't really have this as a challenge. Um, but I do know that people have this is um find communities that you connect with. Like if you cannot find it in person, I would say go online. I have so many online friends. It's amazing. And I'm going to a conference later this month and I'm gonna meet a lot of my online friends, like my internet friends. That's it's so weird, incredible. Right? That's so weird. <laughs> I mean, I had I have like I still have a friend that we work together for like two and a half years and I'm talking about every day and we never met each other. Now first yeah. time that he saw me is like <gasps> I can't believe that you have legs, man. I, I swear I never saw a leg like that. <laughs> you know, this is like, this is what I know. I was sure there's nothing over there. <laughs> it was like yeah. two, two heads above me, you know, I am like, really? You're that tall? You never told yeah, me you're exactly. that tall, you know? Yeah, it's funny, funny stuff, right? <laughs> I was just, um, I had a, a lot of meetings this week and I was literally asking to all my meetings that I'm going to meet in real life, how tall are you actually? Because I'm like a <laughs> tiny person. And I found out that a lot of my internet friends are small too. So I was like, oh, okay, that is not going to be weird because cool, I had a couple cool. of times that it's I showed so up. Yeah, we all showed. <laughs> but at one time I had it on a date that the guy was literally like, you're too short. This is not you. And I was like, no, I have long legs, but I have like, I'm short. Like I never, I did, I put in my profile what my, like, you just didn't read it. And he literally left the day because I was too short. Like, okay, whatever. Like, silly, kid, silly whatever. Exactly. Um, <laughs> all right. So let's talk about Brazil. You're right now. How long have you been in Brazil? That's for right now. <laughs> Since the pandemic. So wow, really that long. Yeah. But I love it. Wow. I'm yeah. Yeah. And it I love Brazil because of Brazil, but also because in all those years of hustling, I love traveling. traveling. But sometimes you kind of need to well, not need to make a choice, but it's all about priorities. And what I figured is that if my priority is travel a lot, see a lot, meet a lot of people and by going out and uh, be out and about, for me, it's really hard to just get stuff done. So how am I going to grow a business that I really, I'm really, really passionate about, especially actually both on Digital Nomads Daily and um, and, and my marketing agency? Like, how am I going to do that if I'm always on the go? So yeah. what I found is that if I stay three to six months in one place, I feel way calmer. So in Brazil, I've been here for a few years now, but I've never been in the same like location for those years. Like Brazil is a very oh, large it's country. Yeah. It's like the size of Europe. Like, <laughs> so I actually don't know if that's true, but it's like really, really large. So um, yeah, I lived in Rio for nine months. I lived in Sao Paulo. I lived all the way in the north. Now I'm in the south and I'm, I lived somewhere in the middle. Like it's, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm totally with you. Uh, same thing, building business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But slow mating is like kind of different, right? Of from being a digital nomad that hop around and mm. um, we've been in Guatemala for six months uh, three three months in the in the city or two months in the city four months over here in the clan now I in Australia as well like I stayed like five six months in the same place when yeah. we're talking about Australia right uh, a huge continent that you want to try and see everything but it's kind of the same right you, you cannot focus on one thing you cannot build you cannot grow if you Keep moving around. It's fixing the schedule, fixing, you know, all of the traveling. I mean, I hate travel. Sorry about it. Like, not an actual traveling scene spot, but the driving and the moving. Places. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, it's two day hustle. I cannot have it. Yeah. I have like such a tied up schedule. No way I'm going to free myself for, I don't know, random four hours drive from Atitlan to Guatemala City just to take a trip, mm. you know. Can you imagine yeah. the time that you spend on looking for Airbnbs? We did a poll on how long it would take. And a lot of people would say like about six hours. I spent so much time on Airbnb searching for houses. So doing that every month it is terrible. So yeah. I love it that I only have to do that every other three months. And 
Um, yeah, that's great. No, I mean, it's more like there's more things for it. I mean, it's more cheap as well. Like if you're staying for six oh, yeah. months, yeah. Days, right? Uh, much cheaper. You already know the community much better. You already, I'm already making friends with, you know, the, the bread guy, the guy of the water, the, the one from the yeah, kiosk and yeah. stuff like that. So you already know them by name. You see them every day. So it's it's much better experience in my eyes. Um, so, you know, it's, it's slow mating. It's, again, different. Have the downside of you're not seeing everything and all of it, but still you're kind of more focused on one destination. Now, let me ask you, been in, in Brazil for two almost three years, I guess. Um mm-hmm. where is your favorite? I know it's a hard question and kind of dumb from my side, but where is your favorite place in Brazil? Yeah, so that is very hard. Um, but I do have two favorite places. Well, actually three. So it depends what you want. I I had this dream that I wanted to live in Rio de Janeiro. I love life in Rio. What I don't like about Rio is that there are internationals, but there are not so many digital nomads. And I find that digital nomads are very different people from expats, for example. Yeah. So the other thing about Rio is that they don't really have a cafe culture there. So here, there's where I'm now, there are a lot of cafes and I love that. I love eating vegan cookies and go for coffees. And that's a part of my mental health, my well-being. So that's what I miss about Rio. But again, I love life in Rio. It has a lot of nature. So it's definitely a top location. Then uh, where I am right now, this is my favorite space place but not for the whole year because <laughs> so in the south yeah yeah because in the south of brazil it actually gets gets a little bit cold and i was here in florianapolis which is an island in santa catarina and i was here last year for no actually for seven eight months also because we loved it it has super nice beach it has a, a cafe culture a lot of vegan food a lot of yoga surf a lot of like sports, CrossFit. It feels very much like Bali, to be honest. Like co-working spaces as well. And the co-working spaces are really nice here. I'm, I love everything here, but it gets cold. And when I need to wear a lot of clothes, I get miserable. I'm a bikini girl and I want to wear one layer of clothes and I don't want to wear multiple layers. I, I don't like That's it. Cold. because Is that naked. cold in, in, in the South? Oh my really? god, it's crazy. Yeah, it gets like it it can get um like like I think like five or ten degrees here. Yeah, yeah. And the houses aren't made like in Europe, you have radiator systems and all of that. So it's fine because people always say, Nina, what are you whining? You're from the Netherlands. But I've been living in tropical countries for a long time. And also back home in the house, it doesn't get cold, but here it does. So it's really cool. And then when you're working the whole day. That kind of sucks. Um, yeah. So Working Floripa like... is my favorite, but yeah. separate, like <laughs> the whole year. And then on the third spot, I would say it's a place uh, in Bahia. It's called Itacare. It's beautiful. It's a hippie vibe. Also waves there. Amazing, amazing, amazing. But internet is a struggle. It's, uh, mm. it's a very small village and there is nothing around it. There's not even a hospital so it's nice but there are no uh facilities really to for like a digital nomad so yeah. if you have a lot of calls and that kind of stuff you just get frustrated every day so yeah. that's but so i love that pers- would be more for sorry that would be more for like a vacation uh, i would say take one week vacation over there go ahead check it out like feel the vibe because for me like if the internet like is bad i already know that i cannot stay as much i'm really struggling over here in atitlan but it's only because we really fell in love with the place and um, mm-hmm. so yeah so it's more like a vacation kind of thing what is the best place would you say for a digital nomad specifically then i would say florianapolis also because here in florianapolis it's super safe like in rio it's it's a mm. it's a, like yeah never have nothing happened to me and you need to know where to move um but it's it's here i barely lock my door i leave my computer in the cafe and then go to the restroom like people would say like you do that in brazil but yeah in florianapolis i do that but itacare is um if you are if you can rely less on internet so if you can do it like 
like low internet quality i would definitely go there for one or two months because it has a lot of like trails and waterfalls and it's incredible like it's really incredible it's just yeah if you have a podcast right. or something it's hard yeah <laughs> um all right it's perfect so first of all thank you so much for joining uh, it was really nice 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 conversation nice interview uh, i hope everybody that's watching it actually join them yeah um so let me tell let me ask you one last question uh what is next for you how is you know end of 2024 you're gonna look like or yeah i love that question right, well, <laughs> well, first of all thank you so much for having me i really enjoyed it i i would love to come back i'm help you guys with uh whatever you're building it's really cool i i love it when uh when more people are helping uh digital nomads so what's next for me well something that's really exciting i've been running an experiment i call it the digital nomad freedom booster and That experiment was literally helping people uh, getting uh, their side hustles or passion projects or new gigs in their business started. And what's really cool is that all my, my side hustle frameworks and everything that I learned and have been using and all these years of marketing uh, experience, especially the funnel building experience, um, I've been putting that together in this program. So in the beginning, you, you said like, oh, maybe coach. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I don't <laughs> see my really myself as a coach. I'm uh, maybe more like a marketing um mentor but this program is it was an experiment i love doing it so i'm gonna run it again uh and it's just really exciting because it's for me it's yeah it's like i love doing this i love helping people to get their their uh, projects started so that's something that's happening and yeah my agency is growing so i'm um, helping more people build their webinar funnels and other than that i'm going to europe so i need to get go packing in in two and a half weeks which i don't like but i gotta do it and then uh go, go back to back my home partner. back home also yeah i it's gonna be lisbon spain netherlands okay. i'm yeah so just a quick euro <laughs> yeah. awesome all right um so yeah uh, i appreciate you again thank you so much for coming uh, it was really pleasure to have you in the show um everyone Corlini Kanana uh, join our discord we're actually managing everything on discord because discord is awesome for community management not like Facebook or whatsapp those kind of things that follow up and mm-hmm. whatever it is uh, it's actually where we can see all of the channels you can see everything you can meet people around you just join it um thank you so much again um We will absolutely gonna invite you again and we will be honored if you're gonna join us and even do a master class with us uh, yeah. tell us a little <laughs> bit your secret professional secret about the funneling um, <laughs> and yeah, that's it. Absolutely. And I just want um, want to add to that. If you want to learn more about uh, the digital nomad freedom booster, uh, you can send a message freedom to uh, to me on Instagram. I'm at digital nomads daily or you It's can go to the description. Di- yeah. yeah, that would be great. Or you can go to digital nomads daily.com slash freedom. Um, then you can check everything out and I also have like the guides that that I'm using um, as freebies that you can just download but yeah if you want to get your project started but you're like 100% lost I'm, I'm gonna run this program again so uh, it would be cool to uh, yes. yeah to help more people <laughs> all right perfect uh, so of course everything gonna be in description as always and uh, we're gonna tag as well the, the instagram and and everything that we can do over here uh, if you have any question and you don't find okay nikki's a uh, social send us a message we're gonna uh, be ready to know <laughs> about it um, and until next time for lenny canana thank you so much Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. <laughs>